You got manual and descriptive coding. Those are the two options that you have in there for uh, coding options. In descriptive coding, we have written that it, you're just picking your options, what it is, and you're pretty much done. Manual coding, you have to know what the coding was before. Your PR codes, they're located everywhere where we looked before where your engine codes were. Uh, in the book, in your wheel well, and you guys know what you use the PR codes are? You know what they are, right? The PR codes for Volkswagen, Audi? The, which, which are your build codes. So we're, we're going to do transmission. We're going to code them with our build codes. So transmission, we go through there. We get a new or used transmission control unit. Some, some units you can't use used because they have component protection on them. They're locked. Other ones you can. Older Passats, you could use a used unit. Um, hit coding. You could pick manual coding. If you know what coding number you had, you just stick it in there. Make sure that when you get a control unit, it is the exact number that you had before, if you're doing a used unit, or if it's superseded, uh, they'll give you a, a new number. Make sure you call your parts department or your local dealer and make sure that number supersedes because I've had a few where you know the ending letter was different, the ending suffix of the part number. So it'll be like a 1JO, I'll write that down. So we have a 1JO 909-290. Ninety-seven J. So that's what came out of the car. I'd like to put back the same thing, unless parts said it superseded. Um, I had a car where they put one uh, module back in. Oh, it's a transmission control module. I bought it off eBay. It should be the you know. It said it was for the same car, but then it had a different ending, which was an A. And the guy complained, hey, it's the same number. But I said, the ending isn't correct. It, it threw a, um, a gear fault code, because it, it was geared for a different transmission. So like I said, you put the code number, hit code, and you should be done. In descriptive coding, it just goes to vehicle options. You hit edit, and from your PR code list, you could pick which uh, control unit you have. You know, manual gearbox with this brake, automatic gearbox with that brake. So you look at your PR codes and find out where you are. All right, so ECU replacing. So what you would need is the pin code, which is all your pin codes, and your new ECU, whatever new or used. You would take that pin code, you'd go in manual functions, all right? So once you extracted a pin code from the, 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 the uh, ECU in the cluster, as long as the key is original to the car, you're good to go. If it's a brand new key and you, you are using a brand new cluster or a used cluster, it won't work. You're going to have to use a dealer tool. They need two pieces of this, uh, this puzzle to be, both of these have to be, two of them have to be original before one could be replaced. So if you have uh, ECU and a key, the original key, you could do a cluster, new or used. If you have a cluster and a key, you could do a, a new or used ECU. If you have original ECU and original cluster, 
you could do a brand new key no problem or the original keys for that car. So you can't swap keys from another car because you swapped the blade to go program to that car. Remotes, you can, but keys, you can't. All right, so we have the pin code for our, for our cluster. Well, we're doing a new ECU. We have the pin code for a cluster. We would go into login. We'd go into login code. That would be the ECU, the new ECU pin. So your new ECU pin, where's my pen? Your new ECU pin would be 6426. So there we go. Let's change this. 64. 26. So, so the old ECU we already removed from the car, or say it's dead. So we go 6426, we hit login. So that gives us access to this ECU. Then from there, you're going to go to adaption channel 50. So 50 is where it swaps the immobilizer numbers you'd put the old value of the original ECU. So see how this says uh, 3639? You would put, for our car, we'd put the 1251 there. Once you put the 1251, it'll give you a pin and a question mark. That's what it'll say, pin question mark. Once you hit, you're going to hit test value at this point. The VIN should come up in data one. If the VIN doesn't come up, we have some kind of issue with either the key, the cluster. If it says, like, uh, wait, then you're going to hit test value again. But once the VIN comes up, you could just hit the save button, and that should take care of it. It's already matched. If you're doing an e uh, engine ECU, you don't need to program the keys. If you're doing a cluster, you need to program the keys. All right. Software updating and programming. On the AutoLogic, how would you know if you needed a software update? Whoop. Uh, you said you go through and test the modules and see if you could find it? Okay, so like you said, there's a button that tells you what modules have an update available, which would be you go under service functions, and the actual button is software version check. So it'll go through every module in the car and tell you if there's an update available. Before doing the update, I would, you'd want a battery charger on the car, test your battery, make sure it's perfect. Um, make sure nobody walks in the way of the charger while you're doing it. All right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna do engine electronics, update available, we're gonna hit that. All right, so on this, it tells you what the VIN number is, Tells you what the software part number, uh, the old and the new, what the part number should be updated to. Uh, this is probably a 1.8T with that um, misfire update, if you guys have ever seen those. Ran cold start misfires. You start the car up in the morning, it starts misfiring like crazy, and then suddenly disappears once it warms up. It's not carbon buildup. It just needs an update on the, the earlier 1.8s. Huh? How early? Uh, 2002 to 2005, maybe uh, A4. Uh, maybe it's 2006 with a convertible, because they, the convertibles were weird. They always have the weird motor at the end of the year where you think it's supposed to end and be finished with. All right, so 
we hook it up, we hit next. It'll tell you your programming time, your battery voltage. Hit program ECU and let it do its work. 